Call of the Dead is arguably one of the most unique maps in COD Zombies history, from its introduction to celebrity characters, to the wonder weapons, and the ginormous map size, there's no denying it brought a unique experience to the zombies community, especially for high rounds. Unlike other maps on Black Ops 1, such as Keynote or Toten, and Ascension which can reach round 100 plus, Call of the Dead cannot, at least on solo. This makes Call of the Dead one of only two maps where the co-op record is higher than the solo record. Because of this, we will only focus on the solo records. So, why can't players reach round 100 on solo? What are the strategies they use, and how have they pushed the map to its limits? Call of the Dead was the second DLC map for Black Ops 1, released on May 3rd, 2011. This map was based around the zombie storyline, but it would introduce a cast of four famous actors as playable characters. These four actors would be Sarah Michelle Gellar, Robert England, Michael Rooker, and Danny Trejo. Furthermore, the main character which is not playable is George Romero, a famous filmmaker who is the boss zombie on Call of the Dead. On top of that, this map would introduce two new weapons named the VR-11, and the Scavenger, as well as a new perk named Deadshot Daiquiri. Despite all of these new introductions, take note of George Romero and the two new wonder weapons as they play a crucial role in high round attempts. In fact, they played such an important role, the first record would only use these weapons, which is round 52 achieved by Jam on June 13th, 2011. Like most early records, Jam's Round 52 game did not have full gameplay. This means we do not know the early round strategies. However, it is highly likely he used a strategy for low rounds as well. This strategy would be known as a beach strat. The way it worked is Jam would train zombies on the snow-covered beach in front of the lighthouse with the door leading inside, closed. The reason for keeping the door closed is making the zombie hoard ups easier. Also, since the beach was located near water, killing the zombies with the VR-11 was very convenient. If you don't know, the VR-11 is a wonder weapon which can turn zombies into humans. Once the zombies turn into humans, they'll start running to the nearest source of water and freeze, counting as a kill for the player. Moreover, since the beach was so big, Using a scavenger, which is an explosive wonder weapon, was fairly easy. Due to this, Jam's beach strategy would set a stepping stone for the next record, round 62, achieved by Mato Master 21 on July 6, 2011. Similar to Jam's game, Mato Master would run the beach strategy, although instead of using the VR-11, Mato Master would use the ray gun. This weapon was introduced all the way back in 2008 with the release of World at War and has been on every single map up until this point. The ray gun is a very powerful explosive damage wonder weapon which can hold upwards of 240 shots when upgraded. Because it can hold so much ammo, the ray gun can actually deal more damage with all of its shots than the scavenger. This is the reason why Mato Master used the ray gun as it was faster than a VR-11 up until round 60 plus. Despite the change in weapons, Mato Master's record would stand for nearly a year, making this one of the longest held records on Call of the Dead. It wasn't until a legendary player named King Jack would come along and break Mato Master's record by reaching round 69 on June 4th, 2012. This is arguably one of the most important records achieved on Call of the Dead. The reason why it was so important is because of George Romero. First, let's take a look at George. Unlike the previous two records which used a VR-11 to make George go away, King Jack would instead defeat George with weapons such as the ray gun and the scavenger. This was fairly difficult to do as George has over 250,000 health, roughly the same health as the zombies on round 68. Although, if you do defeat George, he'll give you a free perk in a death machine, 
unless you do the easter egg. Unlike most maps, Call the Dead requires you to do the easter egg for high rounds. The reason why players are required to do it is so that way they can get the Wonder Waff every time they defeat George. The reason why this weapon is needed for high rounds is because it's only one of two weapons that deal infinite damage on Call of the Dead. In fact, one Wonder Waff shot can kill up to 10 zombies. This allows players to save 10 or more hours when playing this map, which is very important considering high rounds are a speedrun. Due to King Jack using the Wonder Waff, he and every other future record holder would do the easter egg to save time and also make high rounds easier. It wasn't until September 6, 2012, Horde Kill Repeat would achieve round 70, beating the previous record by just one round. Furthermore, Horde Kill Repeat played up to round 70 flawlessly, which means he did not take a single down up to that point. Obviously, that's pretty impressive for 2012. On top of that, his game took him roughly 20 hours, which shows just how long it takes to get to these rounds, compared to other maps, which typically takes 2 to 3 hours at most to reach round 70. Unfortunately, there isn't much to talk about this record, besides the fact it showed how long you could play on Call of the Dead without going down. Surprisingly, just three weeks later on September 30th, 2012, a player named Zomburger No Onion would tie Horde's round 70 record. Unlike most records, this one is arguably one of the most interesting out of all of them. The reason why it was so interesting is because of the easter egg. You see, if you complete the easter egg once, you never have to complete it again as you'll always get the Wonder Waff from George. However, when you do complete it, the game will give you a free Wonder Waff drop underneath PhD Flopper. This is extremely important as the game will give you a free Wonder Waff no matter how many times you complete the easter egg, which is what Zomberger almost did. On round 70, when trying to complete the easter egg for a free Wonder Waff, Zomberger would get trapped in a corner of zombies and go down. What makes this even worse is that Down had his last cook revive. From here on, he had to play the rest of round 70 without going down, which did not happen. As unfortunate as this was, the fact Zomberger thought of doing the easter egg for an extra wonder waff to save time was extremely smart and would eventually be used in later records. Although, that would not happen for over a year, as the next two records achieved round 71 by Hardcore NL and also Durvin did not beat the easter egg for the wonder waff. Sadly, there isn't much to talk about these records as no major changes or discoveries would be made. It wasn't until July 14th, 2013, another legendary player named Frenzy would break hardcores in Durvin's round 71 record by achieving 74. This was quite the record. It was the first time in over a year someone had broken the previous record by more than two rounds, and also showed the dangers of frame lag. Frame lag is an issue that happens on older consoles, such as the Xbox 360, and occurs when a player hits the mystery box too much. Well, since the rounds on Call of the Dead are extremely slow, and players are forced to hit the mystery box to get key weapons, this also means their game will progressively get laggier the higher round they get. In fact, it got so bad, Frenzy was forced to hold a claymore just to reduce the lag. However, this wouldn't stop him. Just 11 days later, Frenzy would break his record again by reaching round 77, breaking the previous record by 3 rounds once again. Because he achieved such a high round, the frame lag was noticeably more bad than the round 74 game. Moreover, he would take only one down throughout the 43 hour game, which is insanely impressive. Sadly, that would come to a halt. On round 77, Frenzy decided to sign into Xbox Live, which crashed his game. 
This was very unfortunate as Frenzy could have reached round 80 and potentially higher, but that didn't really matter. He was now 6 rounds higher than 2nd place. In short, it would take a very long time to break his record. At least, that's what everyone thought. Nearly 4 months later, Mac and Rules would crush Frenzy's record by reaching the first round 80. This was also the first known record since Zomberger's game to do the Easter egg for an extra Wonderwaff. Macken did this on round 76, more than likely so he could finish the round quicker and tie Frenzy's record. Also, Macken's record was significant for another reason. He pushed a map so far, you could only beat the previous record by roughly 1 to 2 rounds. Even though Macken's record was optimized, there's also a bunch of competition for many players, such as Frenzy. Due to this, Frenzy would break Mackin's record nearly two months later on December 31st, 2013, reaching round 81, which ended due to a freeze. This is important to know is every future record will end due to a crash or a freeze. One of the biggest reasons for this is because of the mystery box, However, there is one more cause that players didn't know. You see, in Frenzy's round 81 game, he froze because he was shooting the zombies too much. The reason for this is unknown, although it can have a significant impact on your game. Besides the game potentially crashing, if you shoot the zombies for tens of hours, you can actually lower the number of box hits before you err. This is extremely important to know, as you can extend your box hits to potentially 4,700 plus instead of 4,500 on some maps such as Nocturne and Toten. Essentially, you're giving yourself 200 extra box hits before you get a box error. On top of that, you can get an error by shooting explosive weapons such as a scavenger or ray gun if you have 10% or less box hits left in your game. Unfortunately, Frenzy and many future record holders did not know this info, though it's still important to know so you can understand why these games freeze so often. Despite this, Frenzy's record was surprisingly unoptimized. Just 3 months later, Magan would come back and give Frenzy more competition by reaching round 83. This record was a definition of incredible. The fact Mackin broke Frenzy's record by not one, but two rounds is nothing short of amazing. He quite literally maxed out the map. There simply wasn't enough time to be saved. At least, that's what many players thought. You see, Mackin's game aired roughly 73 hours in, when the reset could be pushed as high as 77 to 78 hours. Also, Mackin aired when he threw a Semtex, which is an explosive grenade. This means he aired when there is less than 10% of box hits left in the game. So, theoretically speaking, a player could reach round 84, or potentially 85, although to reach such a round would be extraordinarily difficult. Because of this, Mackin's record would stand for a very long time. Because of how optimized Mackin's record was, many players were unmotivated to go for the record. Although, that would quickly change. A player by the name of Oxygen for the Win would do his own record attempts reaching round 77 on November 29th, 2014. This was 6 rounds off the record, but it was fairly notable as he played on PC. PC has a massive advantage specifically with the box hits. Remember how players would get frame lag on console? Well, on PC, players no longer had to deal with that. Basically, you could push the record further as freezes were somewhat less common. However, what caused the explosive error was still not known at the time. Due to this, many record attempts would usually end a few rounds off because of the error. Surprisingly, that would quickly change. On January 10th, 2015, Oxygen would reach round 84, beating Mackin's record by just one round, making this the first time the Call of the Dead record 
was broken on PC. Also, Oxygen aired 57 hours in, nearly 20 hours faster than Mackin's game, which shows you just how much time is lost from frame lag. So, instead of the max round being 85, you could theoretically push the record up to round 87 or 88 if you didn't get an explosive error. Still, the chances of someone reaching such a high round would take a very long time. So, similar to Mackin's game, many players became unmotivated until one of the most legendary players named Space Marine came along and tried to beat Oxygen's record. But this time he wouldn't play on PC. Space Marine would try and beat Oxy's record by playing on console. This seemed like an extremely dumb decision by Space Marine, although he was determined to show console players were still capable of beating the record. It wasn't until April of 2015, Space would launch up a game that would change Call the Dead's history. Space Marine would get a fairly slow start to the game, eventually changing as time went on as he played without any downs all the way up until round 79, making this the highest round anyone played without going down. While this was impressive, things would quickly start to turn for the worst. The higher he went, the more his game would lag eventually reaching 8 frames per second on round 80. This was a bit concerning, though still playable to allow space to achieve the record. As the round turned into 81, then 82, and eventually 83, space was running the game at 6 frames per second. This means space was dangerously close to crashing. There was no way he'd be able to beat Oxygen's record, but there was still a high chance for him to tie it. In fact, Space got so close, he'd only have a few hordes left in the round. All he had to do was get the VR-11 out of the box from on top of the lighthouse, and he'd get the record. Until he didn't. Space froze on round 83, one round off tying Oxygen's record. Obviously, this was very unfortunate and unlucky for Space. Not only was he extremely close to finishing the round, he also froze. For obvious reasons, this would remain the highest round anyone achieved on console for the next few years. PC was now the platform everyone had to play on. So, the previous record holders such as Frenzy would make the switch to PC. This was a very smart decision by Frenzy, as just 7 months later he would tie Oxygen's record by reaching round 84. This run would also end in a crash thanks to the explosive error. Even though you could theoretically reach round 88, players still did not know what caused the error. In Frenzy's own word, he said, I think 84 is unbeatable unless you get god luck in your game. Obviously, the record wasn't going anywhere anytime soon. It was going to stay where it was until someone got better luck or new strategies were found. Understandably, the record tie between Frenzy's and Oxygen's 84 game would stand for a long time. Over the next 7 months, nobody got even close to Frenzy's and Oxygen's record. But that was about to quickly change. Another extremely skilled player named Specialist would attempt to reach round 84 plus. Sadly, we don't know much about his restarts and personal best on Call of the Dead. What we do know is Specialist was doing restarts on an alt account named Nissan Skyliner 33 Bro in early 2016. Little did he know, these restarts on an alt account nobody knew about would change Call of the Dead. On March 12, 2016, Specialist would beat Frenzy's and Oxygen's record by just one round, achieving round 85. This was a monumental record. Even though you could still theoretically reach round 87 to 88, Specialist's round 85 record wasn't moving anytime soon. The luck required to even have a chance at trying it was simply too low. 
Players such as Oxygen and Frenzy had to come up with new strategies to beat specialists. And this is where PhD Flopper comes to play. PhD Flopper is a perk that removes all fall damage and if you dolphin dive on a high enough surface, you'll create a mini explosion, damaging the zombies around you. This is known as flopping. Flopping was used in Specialist Record as well as a few previous records, but was only used up until round 55. Although, Oxygen was about to change that. Instead of flopping until 55, he would flop until round 70. The reason why Oxygen decided to flop 15 rounds more is because of the box and explosion error. You see, the amount of box hits you save from the additional 15 rounds is insane. Basically, you could quote unquote easily push the record by another round thanks to flopping. Essentially, you're delaying the error by another round. However, there is one drawback. You see, the explosive damage PhD Flopper deals is very small. This becomes a problem the higher round you are as the zombies gain health as well. Basically, it can take up to 16 hours to reach round 70 instead of the typical 10-12 to 12 hours. But that didn't matter. Nobody had reached reset yet. So, Oxygen decided to grind and get his record back. On April 3rd, 2016, Oxygen would achieve the biggest record in Call of the Dead history. He achieved round 87, breaking Specialist record by two rounds. Oxygen's round 87 game was quite literally the definition of perfection. He flopped until round 69, force drops until 83, which basically means he used explosive weapons such as a scavenger, and on round 83 plus, he used VR11 only and did not use any explosives. In fact, while on round 87, Oxygen crashed while his game was paused just 73 hours in. This record was so good, had he not crashed while paused, he could have reached round 88, literally making the map unbeatable. Even though he was just one round off the theoretical max, it was pretty obvious this record was going to stand for a while. In fact, it would last not weeks, or months, or even a year. It would last for multiple, making it one of the longest standing world records in Zombies. To make this record even more impressive, no one got close to Oxygen's record for those few years. Furthermore, just one year later, Oxygen would play on console Call of the Dead for fun, and would reach round 84. Not only did he hold the world record, he also tied third place. He was simply too good. No one had a chance against him, and it would remain that way for nearly four years. In late 2019, Oxygen would get some competition again, specifically from the two-time previous Call of the Dead world record holder named Mackin Rules. Mackin had just come back from a four-year absence from Zombies. This was odd as most Zombie players who don't play for two years or more typically quit the game. And in this case, that's exactly what happened to Mackin. So, if he quit, why did he decide to come back? Well, in 2018, Mackin started playing again with the release of Black Ops 4 and then switching to Black Ops 1 his main zombies game. Though, this was shortly lived as Mackin would go to prison in roughly late 2018 to early 2019. So, why did he go to prison? Well, Mackin found out there was a pedophile sleeping with underage girls and recording them, in which one of those girls knew Mackin. So, Mackin tried to get the police involved and put the pedophile in jail. Unfortunately, the police couldn't open his phone. On top of that, the girls were scared to testify against the pedophile. So, the police couldn't do much. What makes this even worse is since the pedophile was not caught, he still continued doing what he was doing. So, Mackin decided to take matters into his own hands, eventually going to the pedophile's house and stabbing him. This resulted in Mackin going to prison for 5 months, 
and after being released had a GPS tag attached to him for six weeks. Basically, he couldn't leave his home for a month and a half. So, what did a Giga Chad such as Mackin do after stabbing a pedophile and serving time in prison? You guessed it, he decided to go for Oxygen's record. Although, unlike Oxygen's record, Mackin would restart for a first box setup. Basically, you get scavenger, ray gun, and dolls from the first box. This is important as moving the box will cause you to get fire sills. So by having the box not move from its original location, you will not get fire sills, resulting in you getting more max ammos, which can save an absurd amount of time. But there is one issue. The chance of getting first box ray gun, dolls, and scavenger is roughly 1 out of 78. Basically, you'll have to restart 15 to 20 hours just to get perfect box. This can become very unmotivating for many players, however for Mackin, he had 6 weeks on his hands. During the months of November and early December, he would surprisingly get a few first box setups, most of which becoming a world record contender game. Unfortunately, none of them were. In fact, in one of these games, Mackin would down on round 73, 24 hours into his game. This would lead to a quit out as you want to take it down later into the game, not in the first 24 hours. Basically, everything had to be perfect. So, Mackin continued grinding for hours on end to get another setup. Eventually, he would and got his perks to start camping in the PhD room up until round 24, it would camp on the boat until round 33. The reason why he camped in these two locations is because of how fast they are. The PhD room is typically faster up until round 18 and 20, and the boat is faster all the way up until round 50, but the scavenger falls off way before that. You see, on round 34, the scavenger becomes a two shot. This makes the boat much more difficult to camp. This is where the lighthouse comes into play. Instead of camping on the boat till 50, Mackin would run inside the lighthouse and camp on the second floor. When you camp on the second floor of the lighthouse, it allows you to play no carpenters. A carpenter is a drop which rebuilds all barriers. It is arguably the most useless perk in the game. To get rid of it, all you have to do is have these two windows rebuilded and you'll get no carpenters. The reason why this works is because as long as no more than 4 windows are open on the map, you can't get any carpenters. This is extremely useful as mixed in with perfect box, you'll only get death machine, double points, insta kill, nuke, and the most important drop of all, a max ammo. Since you can get a maximum of 4 drops per round, this means you have a very high chance of getting a max ammo, as you only have 5 drops in your cycle. This would explain how Mackin was later able to camp up until round 55 before moving in front of the lighthouse. All he had to do now was flop till round 70 and beyond. Considering how little damage flopping does, it would take a very long time. The reason why is because Mackin flopped till round 75, 5 rounds higher than Oxygen. This means Mackin did 29 hours of flopping, although he was surprisingly only 1 hour slower than Oxy despite not trading 5 rounds later than him. The reason for this is because of the first box. Mackin didn't get any fire sales. This gave him a massive advantage as he was able to delay the box error further and only be 1 hour slower. Although that would quickly change. As Mackin progressed through the rounds, he was able to get pretty lucky with the VR11s paired with playing slightly better than Oxygen. He was somehow able to play hours faster than Oxygen, eventually tying the record and being 10 hours faster. That's when Mackin beat the unbeatable. He achieved round 88. Despite not holding the record for nearly 6 years, Mackin showed he could still remain on top. And the best part of it all is he wasn't done. He could theoretically reach the first round 90 at this pace, but that's when tragedy struck. Just 10 minutes after achieving round 88, 
Mackett would unpause his game and shoot George to get a wonder off. This resulted in him to air 69 hours into his game. Similar to Frenzy's round 81 game, Mackin aired because he shot the zombies too much with the Pack-a-Punch AK-74 while flopping the zombies. The reason he did this is because of the extra damage the AK-74 dealt to zombies, making them die faster. Surprisingly, still, nobody could figure out what caused these errors, and it was starting to get a bit ridiculous. For nearly 7 years, players had been crashing on the map, yet they had almost no idea why. Although, that would change as time went on. Meet the player named Zombinator. Zombinator had been playing Call of the Dead since roughly 2017, and from then on, he was going for the high round record, but had no luck. Luckily, he was able to make the map more optimized, eventually holding the round 50 and 70 speedrun world record multiple times. Basically, Zob was the fastest player on the map. He could push the record further than anyone else could. All he needed now was some good luck and there's a chance he could push the record above round 90. In early January of 2020, Zombinator would launch up a game that would change Call of the Dead's history. Instead of restarting for the first box, Zob would let the box move if he wasn't lucky enough and get the setup that way. To most players, this wasn't ideal. Though, since Zob was the fastest player on the map, having less max ammo didn't really matter to him. He could still play faster than Mackin, even with fire sales in his drop cycle, mostly because of how bad Mackin flopped the zombies. This allowed Zombinator to get a 9 hour and 16 minute round 70, nearly 4 hours faster than Mackin. Zob would obviously continue to flop to save more box hits, eventually stopping at round 75, becoming nearly 9 hours faster than Mackin. If Zob kept up his pace and got a little lucky with box luck, he could reach round 90 plus easily. So just like any other Zombies player, he continued his game and prayed for the best. Then round 80 came and went, same with 82, 84, in 85. By round 87, Zob was over 12 hours faster than Mackin. He was on pace to not only destroy the record, but also max it out until this happened. Oh, on round 87, one of the best Call of the Dead games ever played crash just 54 hours in, just one round off the record. This was utterly devastating to Zob and everyone watching. This game could have reached round 92 at the pace he was going, yet it never happened. Understandably, this would be one of Zob's last Call of the Dead games before stopping in mid-2020. However, Zob's game didn't go in vain. The main reason why he crashed is because of the use of graphic content. Players had graphic content on, which creates crawlers. This is extremely useful to know when the zombie is low on health, allowing you to play faster and safer in some situations. Unfortunately, it would also result in players crashing around 2,500 box hits in. That would explain why Zombinator crashed just 54 hours in while using the trample steam on the boat to get to the lighthouse box. So to extend this error, turning off graphic content would allow you to play up until box error or the explosion error. This is arguably the biggest discovery in Call of the Dead history. Even though there were many errors that still weren't figured out, the fact you could now reach box error was a huge improvement to Call of the Dead. Because of this new discovery, the previous record holder, Oxygen for the win, would come back and attempt to get first place for the third time, eventually resulting him starting a game in April of 2020, lasting all the way up until May 6, in which he achieved round 91, making this the first ever round 90 plus in Call the Dead history. Oxygen nearly maxed out the map, although there was a problem. You see, Oxygen used a virtual machine for his game. 
The reason for this is because of the 25 day black screen. Basically, if you have your game open for 25 days, it will go black. This includes when you're playing and paused. Essentially, if you want to go for the record, you have to play at least 3 hours every day before your game black screens. If you can't fit those hours in, then you won't be able to get the record. So, to combat this issue, Oxygen used a virtual machine to prolong the 25 day black screen. On paper, this sounds like a brilliant idea and would fix the issue of needing to play 3 hours every day. In reality, this was a terrible idea for Oxygen. You see, when you use a virtual machine, you can create save states. This isn't allowed for most speedrunning communities, especially for zombies. Think about it in this way. Imagine if you downed on, let's say, round 78. Well, if you had a save state before that down, you could just use that save state and act as if that down never happened. This is obviously cheating as you're essentially going back in time to fix a mistake that was your fault. Although, there wasn't much evidence, if any evidence to say Oxygen used save states in his record. The only thing people had was suspicion. Surprisingly, this suspicion was good enough for some people to claim the record was most likely modded. However, since there isn't enough evidence to prove it was modded, I'll leave it as suspicious. There's a possibility this record was done legitimately, but it's hard to say, especially since virtual machines were banned for record runs shortly after this record. Also, I should note you can fix a black screen by waiting another 25 days. Sadly, Oxygen did not know this at the time. This puts a record history in an interesting spot. People knew round 92 was possible, but didn't want to challenge Oxygen, even if his record was suspicious. Part of the reason why is because of how boring Call of the Dead is. Despite having a fairly active record history, new record contenders were fairly rare to see, until December of 2020. A player by the name of Umesco would start going for the record, and he had the most potential out of anyone. Despite never going for a high round on the map, he held the no power in first room record on the map multiple times. This gave him a huge advantage as he was already used to flopping and trading on the map. Furthermore, he knew some things about the map that nobody else didn't. You see, after Mackin's round 88 record, players such as Oxygen restarted for Scav, Raygun, and Dolls out of the first box. Umesco was going to do this until he realized you only needed the Raygun and Dolls out of the first box. The main reason why is because the ray gun gives you drops such as a max ammo, and if you remember earlier in the video, the ray gun actually deals more damage than the scavenger with all of its ammo combined. Basically, you could do 5 times less box restarts and play just as fast with ray gun and dolls. Because of this discovery and Umesco switching the PC, he was able to get 4 round 80 games off stream during October in November of 2020, the most notable being a round 84 error, just 7 rounds off the world record. He was getting pretty close, but wasn't there just yet. That was until he decided to stream his games in early December. In the first game he streamed, he got the record by achieving round 92, erroring 70 hours in thanks to explosives. Considering this was Umesco's first time holding the record, it's safe to say this was very impressive, especially considering he could have reached round 93 had he not erred. Moreover, Call of the Dead was becoming insanely optimized. Throughout the record history, players kept on reaching what was thought to be the theoretical max round, yet new strategies were constantly being discovered. Well, at this point, there weren't any other strategies that could be found. A lot of it was small optimizations and luck, which explains how Umesco was able to achieve round 92. Though, his record wasn't perfect. On round 70, he would achieve a time of 7 hours and 58 minutes, which is the fastest recorded 70 on Call of the Dead, making it a world record. However, you could theoretically achieve a sub 7 hour 70, especially if you have the scavenger. 
On top of that, he would miss a VR11 on round 81, costing him 10 to 15 minutes. Then, on round 85, he would miss a max ammo while using the Wonder Waff. This caused him a potential 1 hour time loss. Then, on round 91, he would do the Easter Egg for an extra Wonder Waff. Unfortunately, he would get cornered by zombies and wasted 4 shots, costing him potentially 15 to 20 minutes. Even though these weren't huge time losses, considering most Call of the Dead games last 70 hours, it showed round 94 could be possible, assuming you got better trades with the VR11. Although, this didn't really motivate players to go for the record. Call of the Dead was incredibly boring to play, and was now extremely optimized. Nobody wanted to put in the time to play the map. For the next year, not a single person made it into the top 10 leaderboard, and it would remain that way all the way up until summer of 2022. So, who broke this drought of Call of the Dead records? Well, it's a player almost nobody has heard of. Even most players in the high round community have never heard of this person. This player was named Snitching. Snitching is quite an interesting player within the zombies community. He isn't the fastest player, but has more potential than most when it comes to high rounds. Furthermore, he rarely streams, mostly playing in the background. This is most notable in his round 203 moon game, which wasn't live streamed at all, explaining why almost nobody has heard of this personal best. Furthermore, he achieved round 230 on Keynote or Tone back in 2019. Unlike his moon game, this one was live streamed, hence why more people have heard of it. What makes these games even more impressive is the fact that they're all within the top 10 highest rounds achieved on the map, especially Kino, which is in the top 5. Well, knowing Snitching, if he was going to play any other map, he was going to have tons of potential, one of them being Call of the Dead. In late May of 2022, Snitching would start a game that would finally break the Call of the Dead drought. At first, his game started off somewhat slow. Luckily, that would quickly change as he got perfect box, scav, raygun, and dolls. This allowed him to save more time and get a 1 hour and 49 minute to 50. Even though this was 4 minutes slower than Umesco, had he gotten only raygun and dolls, he could have been way slower. Unfortunately, he would lose more time as the game progressed, eventually becoming nearly 10 minutes slower to 60 and only 12 minutes slower to 70. Even though he was losing time, it didn't matter on a map like Call of the Dead. 12 minutes isn't going to make a huge difference considering the later rounds can be upwards of 5 hours long. Thankfully for snitching, he was able to make up the time by getting luckier. Snitching had reached round 75 in 14 hours and 36 minutes, nearly 3 hours faster than Umesco. If he didn't error and continued at this pace, he could have reached round 94. So, he continued and hoped for the best. By round 85, he was over 3 hours faster. Unfortunately, that would change for the worst. He would take his last down on this round. Essentially, he couldn't buy any more quick revives in his game. He was forced to play flawless, otherwise his game would end. In one of the biggest power moves in Zombies history, Snitching would play round 85 all the way up until round 91 without taking a down, equating to nearly 30 hours of pure flawless play. If Snitching kept up his pace and continued to play flawless, there would be a very high chance of him reaching round 93, or potentially 94. That was the case until he erred on round 91, roughly 1 to 2 hours away from completing the round. What makes his error even more unfortunate is the fact it wasn't caused from an explosive error or a box error. He just randomly erred while walking on the beach in front of the lighthouse. Even though it wasn't the record, the fact he could have pushed the map so far and played flawlessly for nearly 30 hours is a definition of skill and insanity. Surprisingly, this wasn't the only record to reach in the top 10 since Umesco's game. 
very recently another player named Terra would reach round 90 on January 9th, 2023. Despite this record being two rounds off tying the world record, it was still unique in its own way. Terra wasn't going for the record at all and got first box ray gun and dolls by pure luck. Furthermore, he aired nearly 76 hours in from the zombies going down the zip line. This is the first time it's happened since Space Marines round 83 game and also makes it the longest Call of the Dead game ever played without erroring. Unfortunately, this is where the record history ends. Despite 2020 being the last time the world record was broken, there's been many optimizations found such as trading better, not throwing explosives such as a Semtex once you're near the record, using the VR11 only past round 85, and many more. It's just a matter of time of when somebody will break it. It could be snitching, maybe Terra, or someone else such as you. If you'd like to learn how to play the map, I'll put some guides in the description. But if you're here just for the entertainment, then thank you for watching.